Okay, well, part two. Albert Einstein, Albert, Albert Einstein enters the scientific enters scientific notice at this point. It was the first thing that he became famous for when he noticed some oddities about light. And these oddities are odd. So I actually typed them up for you on the back of your paper. So if you would turn them over and let's have someone read number one. So on the back of your day 5B notes, we're going to look at light slightly different way than Thomas Young uh, pointed us to, where he is showing us pretty clear evidence that light is a wave. Enter Albert Einstein. Here are four observations that he made that would be odd if light truly was a wave. So, would you read number one, Joel? All right, number two, um, Shannon. All right, number three, Maggie. And number four, Brie. All right, as I said, these oddities, we'll call them, are odd to our mind. So let's just try to unpack them at least slightly. It turns out all of these relate to something called the photoelectric effect. So if you would turn over your, your notes and go ahead and take uh, notes there on the back above those four points we just read. There's something I want to explain to you. It's called the photoelectric effect. And let's say we have a metal. So this is a little a block of metal. So draw some metal, and this metal is being hit by a ray of light, a light wave. And when that happens, electrons, which are much smaller than these points, these electrons fly off of the metal and that's called the photoelectric effect and these electrons that fly off are called photoelectrons so and the whole thing is called the photoelectric effect each metal has a work function So a work function is a number and it is the energy with which a metal holds on to its electrons. So each metal has a work function, and that is the energy that a metal has to hold on to its electrons. So, so far the wave theory holds okay, so far, but let's look at these oddities a little closer. So we're taking light wave, remember we're saying as a transverse wave, and when it hits the metal, So there's going to be energy in this wave. That energy is going to be transferred to the metal that it hits. And the electrons inside this metal are going to absorb this energy 
And if there's enough energy, then the photons will be released. So that's the scenario. So that's the thing that Einstein observed. So the first one, it says that electrons were emitted within a few billionths of a second after the light was turned on. So on number one, the thing that's odd about that is that if electrons were, um, the electrons were ejected within a few billionths of a second, that is almost instantly. Basically, it's instantly. They were ejected very quickly. So if light was a, a true, um, if light was a wave, then it would take a while longer than a few billionths of a second. And Einstein had equations to tell us exactly how long it would take. But if it was a wave, this energy takes a while to transfer uh, into this metal. If it was a wave, it would take a certain amount of time but there, they, it didn't work like that. It's like the electrons flew off almost immediately. So that was very odd. So number one, um, under number one, it, we could put if light was a wave, the electrons would take longer to fly off. So make a note of that somewhere around num the number one oddity. Number two oddity, it says that intensity, and when I say intensity, I'm talking about uh, the amplitude. So intensity is the amplitude of the wavelength it had no difference on the energy level of the electrons that flew off. So on number two it said the intensity of light had no effect on the energy of the left electrons after they flew off or left the metal. So the more intense the light, the greater number of electrons, but the energy of the electrons was independent of the light intensity. So, in other words, on number two, instead of trying to unpack that in any, any uh, length, let's just say, or any depth, let's say this. If light was a wave, if light was a wave, they should have had more energy. The electrons that flew off should have had more energy given higher light intensities. And it's not, it's okay even if we don't quite understand this. It's what we're trying to do to show that there were some inconsistencies with the thought that light is a wave. Well number three, it said each metal has a unique cutoff frequency. If light used was below this frequency, the extra electrons would not be admitted. So, each metal has a certain frequency threshold, in other words. So, like a cutoff frequency. Below that frequency, electrons would not fly off. So, that is not consistent again. So, I won't write anything about number three. But that is not consistent, again, with the idea that light is a wave. And number four, the maximum kinetic energy of an emitted electron was directly proportional to the frequency of the light used. 
instead of intensity. If light was a wave, it should have been directly proportional to intensity. It was not. All right, so I won't say much about three and four, but I can accept the fact that Einstein understands things that I don't, and I'm okay with that. But he noticed four strong, odd behaviors that would question whether or not light is a wave. So these four oddities actually make sense if light is not a wave but a stream of particles. These oddities make sense if light is a stream of particles. And that's what we're going to say that light is under this viewpoint. And we call those particles photons. Little tiny particles of energy are what makes up light and they are called photons. And their energy and these photons are related to frequency in this way. Energy equals H times F, where E stands for energy and H stands for a constant, which I'll give you in a minute, and F is our friend frequency. So the constant is called Planck's constant. I think it's P-L-A-N-C-K, Planck's constant, and it, that number is 4.14 times 10 to the minus 15, and it's in a unit called E volts, and E volts are tiny portions of a joule. And it's actually an e-volt is uh, a portion of a joule times seconds. So it's just a weird unit that we use for, if we had used joule seconds, it would be too large. So we would have uh, numbers that were very difficult to work with cumbersome to work with. So we're going to use e, e volts, which is a tiny portion of a joule times seconds. All right, so let's see how that works in a problem. All right, example. And I'll shut down now and pick it up at part three.